Thanks, Maddie. It is <laughs> yeah. coming up to 17 minutes to nine, and my next two beautiful guests. You, neither of you have been to Makatu, right? No. 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 <laughs> you just like Auckland hard. That's it. Anyway, for the second year in a row, the YWCA has published a list of 25 young women between the ages of 15 and 25 years going above and beyond in their fields. Young women who are raising their voices, challenging the status quo, the doers, makers, shakers, the change makers. The official announcement of all 25 wahine happens this afternoon, midday, right? But we are grateful to have two amazing women who are featured amongst the passionate, passionate artists, entrepreneurs, sportswomen and change makers leading their communities and inspiring young women everywhere. Latavia Tualesia Tautai and Gala Boomfield. Boom, Boomfield? Boomfield. Boomfield. Morena Kōrua. Morena. Uh, so good having you in here and I've enjoyed our little all that we've been having before we've come on here. Um, but anyway, thank you, for, thank you for not only what you do, but for being here this morning. So how does it feel to be recognised in this list? And I guess of influential young women. How does that feel? Uh, um, it feels awesome, yeah. I think it's such a cool opportunity and so so wonderful to be um, recognised and have this opportunity to, I guess, be supported in your mahi um, and just be surrounded by other, like, a massive group of amazing young women. So yeah. It's super awesome. Yeah, and it's very cool to be surrounded by people who are inspiring um, and actually appreciate the stuff that you do, right? Yeah. yeah. Latavia, what about you? What does it mean? Um, I think it's definitely not only a win for ourselves, but it's a win for our communities, for the villages that have raised us. I think it's a real honour, um, you know, to be included on this list. You know, you get a bit of imposter syndrome, but I just think <laughs> this doesn't belong to me. This belongs to my Pacifica community. It belongs to my grandmother and my family in Southside. So I feel really blessed, actually, to be a part of this group. And we had the launch last night and we met each other, um, the other 23 incredible young women. So, yeah, just feeling very, very lucky at the moment, Jenny. It was just beautiful. And so you mentioned imposter syndrome. And uh, Gala, I know that in terms of the, the work in the mahi that you want to do alongside sport is around mental health, right? Yeah. So Latavia, I want to start with you and I want you to talk about that imposter syndrome first because, you know, so it doesn't go away. I suffer from it a lot. Yeah. Many of us do. And, well, actually probably all of us do, but don't admit it, right? So I want to start with you with that and then talk to you, Gala, about the work that you do around mental health with young people. So let's yeah. you, talk to me about that imposter syndrome yeah. and how it hits you. I think definitely um, as a young woman, um, you kind of feel like, um, should I be here kind of thing? But especially as a Pacific young woman, we've been um, raised with humility and service at the forefront. So a lot of the work I do for um, our Pacific families in poverty, I feel like um, that's my duty. That's what I owe to my community for um, everything that they've sacrificed for me. So mm. um, being recognized for it um, feels, it's an interesting feeling that I'm grappling Playing with it's both gratitude but also trying to be mindful um, mm. of all those who don't get to come here to breakfast all those working hard working overtime you know to make ends meet um, who I serve every day mm. so Garlet skating is your thing right yeah but that's only part of it it's yeah. a vehicle yeah for a message that you want to put out there yeah yeah I think um yeah, I'm, I'm a skater at heart. Um, oh, you're a very good skater. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Um, yeah. yeah, so mental health is very apparent in my life. Um, yeah, very much surrounded by it. Um, I think there's definitely a very big, almost pandemic across the world of young people um, dealing with mental health. And the system's really hard to navigate. And um, I think we really need to have a cultural kind of transition in, in the way that we deal with it and talk about it. Um, so in the future, at the moment with friends, I'm working on a um, trying to create an organisation to kind of fill that void um, in between the people who are kind of um, there to help and the people who want to receive the help and make the system a bit easier to navigate. Um, as well as wow. I'm working on a uh, national campaign called Hear Me See Me. It's a podcast series, a platform for young people to tell their stories and challenges on um, so that Aotearoa can hear their voices and, you know, their stories and 
Yeah. Is it podcast out yet? Yeah, yeah. so it's launched, um, yeah, called Hear Me, See Me. Um, we've got five podcasts at the moment and plenty more to come. And where do you find it? Uh, Spotify or? It's, it's online, so if yeah. you look up, if you go to hearmeseeme.nz, you'll find it. Skating, okay, so you've been uh, selected for the Olympic Development Squad, that was last year, and karate is also your thing as well. Yeah. 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 And you find that having that, having sports as a way to be able to, I don't know, open the doors maybe, uh, to have those conversations with young people? Yeah, yeah, I think um, those two sports are definitely very individual and community based and so um, having yeah. that as a kind of intro into a group of people and a kind of uh, similar topic um, is really helpful and it's also two really great outlets and mm. really nice physical activities to help you in your mental health and well-being and yeah beautiful Octavia I had this conversation just before we came on here and said you tell your story as much as you want to tell so in terms of you and your service and your commitment to service to your communities tell us about where that came from yeah yeah I think my why comes a lot from my lived experience um, growing up um, in poverty being raised by a single mum on the benefit um, moving from house to house we moved about 14 times went into a women's refuge all of these kind of trauma um, traumatic experiences um, I think but um, the reason why I serve is because um, I understand that I'm one of the lucky ones. I go to university, I study a conjoint degree, I work in a Pacific Social Service now for Nor Ola, um, where we're serving families um, and people who look exactly like me, who look exactly like my mum when she was begging wins for my stationery and uniform, and my aunties who are working overtime at Bluebird Factory so that I could have enough and so that I could have enough to survive and thrive. So I think um, that's my why where it comes from. Um, so anything I get, this a New Zealand Youth Award and all those kind of accolades or anything it goes to my village and I owe it to them to make more space and also share a little bit of my story um, so that there's less shame and stigma because it's mm. no child's fault that they're living in poverty um, and these children don't exist alone they live in families um, and I think empathy needs to reach out to all of them so I hope I live my life like gala in service of um, the people and places that have raised us and who have lived similarly to us yeah Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Just wow. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you both so much uh, for being with us this morning, for the service um, that you both give to your different communities. Just beautiful. Yeah, I don't really know what else to say apart from go you two. And congratulations on being recognised for the mahi that you do. Latavia, Tuilasia, Tautai and Gala, Boomfield. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, Hariakine coming up. Well, we'll be back after the break. <laughs>